Thanks. Hi all, uh, I'm uh, Anastasios Nanos. Um, my talk is about lightweight uh, hypervisors in the cloud and at the edge. Um, I'm going to talk about our work um, uh, in our team. We are uh, um, a young SME. We're doing research in um, hypervisors and, uh, uh, and the low level parts of the stack. We're almost uh, seven people. Most of the team is here. You can ping us right there in front. You can ping us any time to grab a coffee or a beer. Uh, we're working on, uh, on the lower level parts of the stack, meaning um, with hypervisors, with containers, with container runtimes, uh, with storage, with unikernels. And uh, we're also working on uh, um, accessing hardware accelerators from within VMs or containers or unikernels. Uh, we're based in the UK, in Greece and in Spain. So this talk um, is about um, uh, how we should handle uh, the hypervisor layers um, and, the, and the virtualization layers in general um, at the edge. Uh, so people are, are, are using microservices-based approaches. They're using platform as a service, software as a service, function as a service, the serverless stuff. And they have been using um, uh, hypervisors or sandboxed um, environments uh, or um, hybrid approaches on, on this level. Um, so we have been working on, um, on this kind of stuff and trying to understand which is best for its um, s solution, for, its, for the workloads that people are running. Um, we will present um, a minimal lightweight uh, VMM which interfaces directly with KVM and uh, some of the work that we did to port uh, Firecracker um, on, a, on a Raspberry Pi. So as, uh, as I mentioned, people are using containers, uh, sandboxes, micro VMs, micro VMMs, or unikernels. We're not sure about that. And uh, we, we have seen that the community has introduced um, some lower overhead uh, VMMs that can host these um, approaches. Uh, people are using containers and unikernels on containers. They're using um, sandbox environments like th they're using SecComp to actually contain a specific workload within a specific uh, enclave. They're using um, uh, KVM to isolate workloads. Uh, there's work on uh, Solo 5, the, the former UKVM UK stuff. There's Firecracker, there's Rust VMM or Cross VM, all that stuff. But if we, if we try to run this kind of stuff on a, on a low power device, on a Raspberry Pi, on, a, on an NVIDIA Jetson uh, board, we're getting issues. Uh, there seems to be um, a lot of, um, of contention in these kind of boards. Um, additionally, these boards are, are built to have uh, extra hardware to, to be able to um, accelerate specific uh, um, applications like uh, NPUs or uh, uh, GPUs specifically to, to handle ML workloads and, and stuff like that. Um, so if we try to run a VM uh, on, on this kind of devices, we, we will probably end up with either Zen or, or KVM. So the, um, I, I'm, an, I'm a Zen guy, so, so full. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've been working with Zen for, for quite some time, so I'm, I'm more biased on, on, on their approach. Um, so uh, Zen is, is a bare metal hypervisor and VMM. Uh, there's no mode switches between um, uh, the, the monitor and the hypervisor, actually. Uh, KVM is a, is a patch, that it's, it's actually support for uh, the hardware extensions using a, um, uh, an emulator in, uh, in user space. There have been approaches where um, people have been, op uh, have been optimizing the, the, the VMM with uh, Kemun Lite, with CrossVM, with RustVM, with Firecracker, with Solo5. 
stuff uh, with the HVT tender at least. Um, so we, we think that um, um, on, on one part KVM is uh, re really useful in, in terms of the hardware ex of, the, of the interface for the hardware extensions uh, for VMs. So um, it's it's easy to debug. It's easier to de debug than Zen because it's uh, the the most of most of the VMM is in is in user space. Uh, Linux has all the available device drivers to be handled by by the system, so there's no custom porting there. Um, on the other hand, Zen uh, has the VMM and the hypervisor on the same context, so it's uh, it's a bit faster in terms of spawning a guest of handling the memory of the guest and the hardware extensions for for uh, the memory management but uh, we need a, a driver domain to handle device drivers to act to uh, interface with the external world of the node um, that's a figure of how um, how kvm handles a, a vm running so there, there are device drivers in the Linux kernel, there's the network and the block stack. There are the functions that KVM offers to, um, to provide this kind of isolation through the hardware extensions. There's a VMM running in user space on the, on the left side um, that handles all the binary loading for the VM OS to run uh, some of the memory management, all the PV drivers, and the the exit handler for the VM when uh, when a privileged instruction needs to be executed, and on the right side is the non-root mode where the VM um, is running. So on on a VM enter, there's the, this this switch from root mode to non-root mode, at least on the x86 architecture. Uh, the application is running uh, in in user space. There's a runtime. There are uh, the, the drivers to interface with the monitor, so it switches to, to, to kernel space uh, on non-root mode. Then the PV drivers communicate with the PV drivers of, um, uh, of the monitor. There's another world switch there uh, with, an exit, with, a, with a VM exit. And then um, there's, another, uh, there's another mode switch to KVM to handle all the all the hardware specific stuff i mean like in the in the in the network case or, or in the in the block case so uh, all these paths seem a bit um, um, they, they 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 seem to produce a lot of overhead when handling io um, in in the zen case the the good thing is that there's no um, uh, there's no redundant mode switch, but uh, still we need a, a helper driver domain to be able to handle device access. So actually there is um, an extra mode switch and an extra world switch. Um, so we have been uh, trying to understand which are the overheads uh, when running stuff at low power devices. And uh, uh, to do that, we, we, we explored um, several uh, lightweight hypervisors, and we, we executed them on a number of low-power devices, ARM-based, and on x86. So we, we used a lot of tools from, uh, from the community. We used the, 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 the Rampran unikernel. We used the Mirage OS unikernel. We run Redis and Nginx and the DNS example on um, on Solo 5 on on the on the KVM tender of Solo 5, which is Solo 5 HVT on Firecracker on on Kemu. And um, uh, while Solo 5 worked out of the box on um, on a Raspberry Pi, uh, the it's it, it's the first thing that that, that we tried. Uh, we tried to run Firecracker, but it, it didn't work because there's no uh, Geek support for um, for the Geek V2 uh, version of uh, of the interrupt controller. Solo 5 um, actually worked because there's no interrupt handling. 
um, so we we run this simple unikernel uh, um, uh, example. So we uh, with the blue bars we see Kemu. Um, we have the clients running on in, in on on the same host and the VM running on Kemu um, on a on a single core. So the blue lines show uh, the the Kemu results. These are requests per, per second, so higher is better. And uh, the red lines show um, solo fiber HVT. There is some kind of improvement, but still um, we think that uh, it, it's not enough. So we we wanted to try how Firecracker would r respond to this uh, um, to this setup. Uh, Firecracker is a, um, a um, a user space monitor written in Rust, uh, AWS, um, Amazon introduced it. Um, there was already support for uh, ARM devices, so what we had to do was to just port Geek V2 support. Um, we managed to, to upstream this effort, which is good, so Firecracker now supports um, a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and we run the same uh, um, experiment. We see uh, that uh, that Firecracker behaves uh, a bit like Kemu, uh, and Solo 5 is still um, uh, uh, better than than those two approaches. Um, but still, we we think that uh, uh, there is space for improvement. Um, in this space, so um, so actually we 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 say that that the the requirements for a for a workload to be running on um, on such a low power device should be that we need a, a driver for the hardware extensions, we need access to the hardware, so an interface uh, um, a, a device driver for the hardware. We need uh, to define the ABI for the workload to be running. Uh, will it be a unikernel, a Linux, something else? And uh, we need that a VM, we, and, and, we, and, and we need some kind of software to be able to access and interface with the hardware extensions and to handle VM enter and VM exits. So on, um, uh, we think that KVM is Fine, it's it's a great example for for the driver for most platforms. Um, we think that the Linux kernel is the most used thing, so we have drivers for almost every device available. Uh, regarding the, the the binary interface, we're experimenting with Solo 5. We want to try micro VM, the 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 Firecracker approach, or even the Linux ABI, and for the VMM. Uh, we introduce um, our own monitor. Um, so KVMM is actually um, a VMM running in the Linux kernel. It handles uh, VM enters and the VM exits just the same way as Kemu or Solo 5 HVT. And it, um, it interfaces with network and uh, block stack di directly in the kernel. So this is an, an equivalent figure um, uh, how of, of how a VM is running. Uh, this is all in, in, in kernel space, so there is no mode switch. On, on the VM exit and on VM enters, there is nothing that uh, um, would interrupt the execution. Um, the VM is running on the, um, on the, ri on, on the right part of the, of the graph. And, uh, and, the and, the, and the PV drivers are interfacing with the VMM um, in the Linux kernel. So there's only a root mode to, to non-root mode switch. It's, uh, uh, it's work in progress, so we're working on that. We have uh, support for x86 and um, ARM. We are able to run uh, Solo 5 applications and everything that support that runs on top of Solo 5. So we can run Rampran Unikernels, uh, Mirage OS, Unicraft. 
recently we have tried to integrate um, 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 an OCI compatible runtime. We forked uh, the work that uh, the Nabla containers team um, have done. So it's as easy as running Docker run with our runtime and a specific image. So we run the same experiment with Redis. Uh, that's, ah, uh, uh, I should mention that these results are on, on x86. Uh, so we, we can see that there is improvement compared to KMO and Firecracker, and um, also improvement compared to the generic Solo 5 approach. Um, regarding latency, uh, we have run uh, um, a micro benchmark, ping, uh, for, for the for the round trip latency handling on x86 and on ARM, we see that uh, that KVMM is uh, so this is time so lower is better. Uh, we, we can see that KVMM outperforms all other approaches, and and the same stands for for ARM for uh, for the ARM case. We run that on a Kadas uh, Vim3 board. Um, we could do a small demo for uh, showcasing our approach. <coughs> I have a screencast. Uh, I have a screencast. I'm not sure if I can zoom. Uh, Can you see? I'm not sure how to zoom <laughs> on that. So the whole point. Let me let me just uh, skip that. I'll, I'll I'll just say what what the demo is about. So we we log in into a uh, into an Nvidia Jetson Nano board, um, and we actually run we execute Docker run. Uh, um, and, uh, and the container image with our runtime, and uh, we, we see that we, if we point uh, um, uh, a DNS client to this IP address that, that the runtime has given us, we see that uh, zones are being um, re re resolved uh, as they should. So um, it's actually showcasing our VMM on, uh, on an ARM device. Let me go back, I think. Oh. Okay, let me conclude. Um, so, um, we've shown um, we've shown KVMM, uh, which is a minimal virtual machine monitor uh, residing in the Linux kernel. We currently support uh, the Solo 5 ABI. Uh, and we're planning to have a pre-alpha release sometime next month. Um, our next steps are to support more ABIs, so we, we would like to try running something uh, more, uh, let's say, um, extending our, uh, our ability to run more applications. Um, we would like to study the, the container integration, there's some work, we, we have been doing some work on um, integrating uh, container storage and unikernel storage and um, uh, bridging the gap actually when we run unikernel containers as a, when we run unikernels as, uh, as containers. And uh, also we would like to try some of the of recent approaches by the community like VM forking or pre-allocation of, uh, of vCPUs to be able to handle, to, to have instant uh, spawn times. Um, I would like to mention that this project is partially funded by um, Horizon 2020 project. And also I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to submit a, um, um, a paper in our workshop on ISC uh, this year, it's in uh, June 21, 25th actually, it's the workshop, the, and the deadline is April 5th. Thanks very much.
You can also feel free to check out our blog. It's blogcloudkernels.net or our, our GitHub. Sure. Mm -hmm. So is the reason you're actually getting faster there just because you're not already using existing infrastructure that does the same thing? Yeah, so, so the question is, um, uh, if we were using vhost, uh, why are we better than, than the KM or the Firecracker alternative? So we are using vhost, that's one thing. Uh, the, the second thing is that for these kind of benchmarks, we are uh, in on a on a on a latency uh, on, on a latency side. So vhost is not helping with latency at all. Um, it should. I'm 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 not that sure. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we can chat yeah. about the flying, but I, 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 I think that in the in the in, in the vhost case, uh, it's the uh, if the message size is large, then you do get the the, the same re result. If if the message size is small, I think you you do get an exit. Maybe, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. But uh, just to sure, yes, uh, and just to be clear, we're we're doing the exact same thing as Solo Five or Camo for the exit and the IO the IO handling. There's a hyper call. We you you wake up in the monitor and you do the the, the send message, receive message if it's uh, for for the network, um, and. Uh, Actually, we, we, we have been thinking that uh, uh, we, we don't have to use um, um, a virtual appro um, approach or uh, the solo five approach, which, which just polls. We could use something which is more elegant and tailored to our approach. I mean, if you if you are already in the kernel, then you don't have to do anything complicated like I/O rings, or you could just uh, forward the request from the guest to the network or to storage so it's yeah and anyway I, ideally in a vm world you don't want to exit at all that, that's the main main thing to optimize for as soon as you're sure. exiting you're already adding latency so what i was missing in the charts was the baseline on what what, what is the, well, the performance of the workers on the host right because you definitely still have a gap mm -hmm. uh, yeah thanks let me just repeat this with the mic uh, what you always want to optimize for in, in VM worlds is to not have exits, because any exit is always slow. It's always going to be through the slow path, whatever you do. Um, if you can somehow avoid to do exits, which is exactly what all of the modern interfaces are about, like the vhost or IOU wing or everybody who's like e even the um, smartniks do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the whole point is to not ever exit the VM at all if you're doing UIO. Um, yes, you might end up sacrificing a core, but Again, uh, especially on edge devices, you have in-order cores just lying around, basically. You, you could dedicate one of those just to, to keep handling your I.O. in the background. Um, yeah. If we could integrate with what I suggested earlier with I.O.U. wing, or maybe just improve vHost to, to um, do the polling for you on behalf of, of you, you might literally get to um, the same performance numbers as bare metal, most likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. Uh, issue is that we, 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 we need to exit to ensure isolation in this kind of cases. So, no? You, you, you disagree? I disagree. <laughs> um, we, don't, we don't need to exit. To, to, you need to exit. You need to make sure you have um, only access to the data you actually need to from, from the, the polling side, but that doesn't have to be the same entity as, like, the VMM. It can be different. Either way, um, I don't think this is the, like, we don't have the time to, to go through this in detail. So uh, let's take this offline and then... Okay. Thanks very much.